Every time that I've ended up in a place where I recognize that I'm filled up and it's time to do a clearing, it's time to do like a spring cleaning of my life, what ends up happening is the space gets filled in with more opportunities, more dreams, more successes than I could have even imagined. Welcome to the Ignited Recovery Podcast, a new way forward for anyone looking for answers but feeling left out. If you've been searching for empowerment, triumph, and purpose, you found them right here. You won't hear the same solutions and you're not going to have any excuses to fall back on because Ignited Recovery allows heroes to rise and become their best selves. I'm Dr. Adi Jaffe and I can't wait to be your guide on this journey. Are you ready to become an Ignited Hero? Hello, everybody, and welcome to this episode of the Ignited Recovery Secrets Podcast. I'm Adi Jaffe, and it is busy in the Ignited household. Um, honestly, it's funny. If, if, you, uh, if you're anywhere close to us and you see everything that we, and Sophie and I, I mean by that, are, are putting out, you probably know how busy things are. But let me fill you in a little bit. So Sophie and I are in the process of buying our first house, which is incredibly exciting, but also holy shit. Like if I thought I was busy before, and by the way, just to be clear, I did. I had absolutely no idea what I was bringing on myself by taking this challenge on. Um, we talk a lot. We talk a lot about space and clearing space and self-care, right? It's one of the big questions we ask every single one of the guests on our Wednesday episode. How do you take care of yourself? And I did great. I got myself so much space and we're going to go through this in detail today but like i did such a good job patting myself on the back right now um over the last you know eight nine years to clear up space and then every once in a while everything gets stacked up on top of everything else and you like you just barely have room to breathe but that's that's kind of life right like I used to have no space in my existence, like just no room to breathe pretty much. And and I cleared it up and then repeatedly this keeps happening. Well, here's the beautiful thing about life that not that many people decide to tell you. Maybe it's because they're scared of people will all sit around on the couch and not want to do anything. But life is like a constant recycling, reformulating, refiguring out what you're doing act. And when it comes to just keeping your head above water, I want to break it down for you like this. You know, first, in every one of these kind of re-metamorphosis experiences, you figure out that you need to, and then you clear out space in your life. So, like, if we go way back in my history, you know, when I was in the middle of using and selling drug use, getting drugs, selling drugs counting the money from the drugs, figuring out what to do with it to get more drugs, using more drugs, over and over. Like that world took up almost all the space I had. I don't know if I've ever told this story on here, but I had uh, security cameras in my studio and outside of it because I got held up at gunpoint and robbed. And so I, I got these cameras everywhere. Like each room had two cameras in it and then the doors, which there were two of them to my studio, had cameras above it too. And I would find myself in that, ex- like you remember, Anybody see Scarface? And you remember that scene where you're just sitting there and just looking at all the video cameras of people coming in to kill him? Um, There weren't as many people coming in to kill me, but I was constantly looking at the video and just doing drugs, just using and doing drugs, using and doing drugs. When I found the videos later after I was done, um, I watched them because it was kind of, there was curiosity two, three, four years after I was done. And all I did was sit around and use. And then people would come in and buy drugs and I would use with them. And then they would go away. And when I would keep using, that's it. I had no space for anything else in my life. Now, I already told the story of my recovery and rehab and relapsing, et cetera. But as I started using less drugs and I cleared the space, like I changed the phone number I had. I got rid of a lot of my friends, not all of them, but a lot of my friends. There was space. Now, when you first do the clearing up of the space, when you get room to breathe, it's not always clear what's going to fill that up. Like at the time, when I was done with rehab, when I was done with jail, when I was done with drug use, 
I didn't know what that space would get filled in with. I didn't know what it would grow into. But the thing is in life, it's always true. You have to make the room to find out what's going to fill it. You can't, you don't know what's going to fill your void until you allow the space. So once I allowed the space, new opportunities showed up. Now, if you remember from some of the past stories, I thought what was going to fill up the space was I was going to go get a job. And so I tried. I tried for six, nine months. I applied to everything that I could. I didn't get work. Again, you don't necessarily know what's going to fill up the space until it's there. For me, what started filling up the space was school. Again, the interesting thing is I swore off of school. I said when I graduated undergrad and got my bachelor's, I said, I'm never setting foot in school again. But once my life got filled up and I cleared space again, I ended up just finding my way back into graduate school. And graduate school filled up a lot of space. Um, I was really motivated. I also had nothing else to do. So kind of like in a vacuum, the school just kind of went in and took up as many hours as it could. And a lot of the free space in my life got filled in by school. Then I got in a relationship. That filled up more space. Then I got married. Almost all the space got taken up between school, the beginning of us having kids, and just my new normal. Now, the interesting thing is my new normal looked absolutely nothing like my old life. But here I was finding myself again full to the brim. I had Sophie. I had the kids. I was working at the time 70, 80-hour weeks. I, I was barely keeping my head above water. And Sophie and I, we would take these walks around the block and just try to figure out what to do. And Sophie would keep trying to tell me, you got to clear up space. And I resisted it like crazy because if you're like me, you find yourself anchored and, and holding on to the way life looks right now. You can't imagine it looking freer, emptier. And we would take around just these blocks with... Um, you know, Kai in the stroller and then Kai and Leo and just kind of say to myself, like, this is just not working out. We're not spending time together, whatever. Life was full. I'm barely breathing. Because the thing is, again, when you're in your new normal, you don't realize you found yourself in the same space again. That's where the recycling keeps coming in. After about six, seven months of these conversations with Sophie, it became very clear that it's time to recycle. It's time to throw out the trash. It's time to get some myself some space. So we did that. And the way it, we did it at the time was I had to quit some jobs, which was really difficult. Uh, I'll go into this in another section when we do something about money one of these days coming up. But I had to sit down with Sophie and have a real conversation about, hey, these jobs bring in money that supports us. Here's what I need you to be able to start bringing in so I can empty out some space. So if you notice, I'm clearing out space and Sophie is filling up. We also found out, I think you probably heard this story if you went into the Going Deep episode about our story. We also discovered that, not unbeknownst to me, it sounds bizarre to say that I didn't know what I was doing, but I was also filling up a lot of space in my life with these inappropriate relationships and chats and online relationships with other women around the world, around the country. I literally hadn't realized until the discovery, until our relationship almost fell apart, how much of my headspace and literally my time was filled up with either covering it up or acting out in that way. So that got taken out. And just like what happened last time, I couldn't have fathomed what would have happened when I released about 20, 25 hours of work out of my life and cleared away all these intrigue and all these inappropriate relationships. But what ended up happening is I had for the first time in years at that point, because it was six, seven years since the last clearing out, I had time to sit and think to myself, what do I want? And if you're like me and you're listening to this right now, you haven't had the time to think to yourself, what do I want in life in a really, really long time? And the reason you haven't had the opportunity is because your life is so full, because you're barely keeping up. Because from the moment you wake up in the morning until the moment you fall asleep, you're stretched to the limit. Well, guess what? The space I had, the time I had to refigure out what I wanted to do, I figured out I wanted to start a new business, something called Ignited and a podcast that goes along with it. And so the clearing out of that space 
is the thing that allowed what we're doing right now in this moment while you're listening to happen. It's kind of like a little inception moment for us. And I got to say, in the two years since that's happened, since that all, all that space got cleared up and um, I found myself doing this work, it's incredible what has shown up in my life. The number of emails, the number of amazing messages we get from you guys about the impact it's made, the hundreds of people that we've been able to help Sophie and I directly and I working with directly and people who've done uh, my courses or read the books or enrolling in our Save Your Marriage program right now, it's magical and none of it would have happened if the space didn't get cleared up on the front end. And so true to form, it was time to elevate and work and fill the space back up. And what's filling the space up is like a dream if you think about it. I have a company that has the most impact I've ever had in my life. I have a wife and a relationship that is showing up in a way I never thought anybody would show up for me and in our coupleship ever before. And we're having an opportunity to buy the first house, right? The dream is happening. And I'm filled up to the brim. And so I can already tell Maybe it's not going to take three or four years before having to do the next recycling. But I already know because I look back and this is what I love doing in my life. I look back and I say, every time that I've done this, every time that I've ended up in a place where I recognize that I'm filled up and it's time to do a clearing, it's time to do like a spring cleaning of my life. What ends up happening is the space gets filled in with more opportunities, more dreams, more successes than I could have even imagined. So I'm excited this time, you know, hopefully we're about a week away from closing on this house and I don't know what the space that I'm going to have to clear up will fill in with, but I know one thing for sure and it's going to be amazing. So when I look back in my life and the story I just told you is 15 years of clearing and filling back up, clearing and filling back up, the place I've ended up with 15 years later would have been completely unimaginable. And the challenge I want you to sort of sit with is to say, how much of what's happening in my life right now is happening just because there's literally no space to think? How much of the conflict in my relationship, the disappointment in my work, the feelings of resentment, anxiety, and stress that I have, am I just putting up with? And there's dead weight, there's space that I could absolutely clear away if I just make the tough decisions. Because the magic of life is this. If you clear it up, new opportunities, new dreams, new discoveries, and new wins will show up for you. So if there's a little exercise at the end of today's episode, this is it. We did a session with Alex Sharfin for the 21 Day Habit Reset Challenge. And the way Alex talks about this is, where is the pressure and noise that is keeping you away from your ultimate self? I want you to do this exercise when you finish listening to this podcast. Take a piece of paper, take five minutes, set a timer, and I want you to start writing all the things that are creating the most stress, the most pressure, the most noise in your life right now. And when you're done with that list, you have your mission. How much of that can you clear away? How much space can you create so that you can grow again in your life and get to a new and better place? I hope you love this. This has worked magic for me. If you like it, do me a favor. Screenshot it. Tag me at Dr. D. Jaffe and at Ignited.me. Let us know what you loved about it. Share it with somebody who could use it. Maybe a partner, maybe a friend you know is struggling. The whole point of this is to create impact in other people's lives. Thank you so much for joining us. Have an amazing rest of your Friday and weekend. See you next week. Thank you for tuning in to the Ignited Heroes Recovery Podcast. I really hope you found the information here useful and that we'll see you back here next week. And look, I want to make sure that this podcast is the most useful it can be for you. So please let me know by emailing info at ignited.com if there are any specific topics or questions you'd like to have addressed. As usual, if you like this episode, I would love for you to leave us a five-star review and rating. Thanks, and see you next week.